Hi there, in this video I will talk about the scatter chart. So scatter chart as you can see it right over here, it's very useful for visualizing a lot of data points let's say if you have. So for example on x axis let's say you have discount values and sorry on x axis you have discount values on y axis you have let's say sales values and probably you want to see that uh, when your sales is high then whether there is a high discount or not or if the sales is less even after that you are giving a high discount or not by maybe your sales rep or channel partner or things like that so to see those kind of relationships over thousands of or um, hundreds of thousands of data points i have seen that scatter plot have been really really useful to visualize that data over the two numeric dimensions so i will show you here in this video how you can create a scatter chart within the python's matplotlib library all right so let's go ahead and uh, come to this scatter plot so first of all as usual we will uh, import the matplotlib.pyplot library as plt and we will use this matplotlib inline magic command so that we don't have to write plt.show again and again as i explained in my first video so after this, uh, let's create two values. First is x for the x-axis, maybe 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. As you can see, there is a difference of 2 between each value. And the y value, let's say uh, there is 25, 35, 21, 67, 63, and uh, maybe... 55 yeah so 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so let's give it one more value though when you are uh, in the using the real time you can simply use the column names and i'll show you that in this uh, with the help of a real time data once you get some basic understanding so i have executed this and now i want plt dot scatter and simply i'm passing x and y and here i have my data points so as you can see on y axis is going from 20 to 60 as we have 25 to almost uh, 67 and 30 it's going up till here and showing you when they are crossing so first value is 25 so over here 1 25 then you have 3 35 so like over 3 35 this way you can get an idea how you know your values are over the two, two numeric dimensions. Now, couple of parameters that definitely you can adjust to make it more meaningful. So I'll just show you a couple of them and then followed by some practical example. So let me show you property which is x comma y and then you can specify the marker over here. So the property which is marker and let's say I want X as a marker so I can get X as a marker and you have a lot of different you know the values for the marker like by default it is O but uh, you can use this you know command to get so tilde and matplotlib.markers to get the more number of markers but down there we should have I think some information but no i think in some different case i have seen that so you have x even you have star if you want so all these ones these are helpful in scenarios like you have multiple you know values over here for multiple dimensions so for example uh, right now this is x and y let's say we have uh, x1 and uh, y1 and maybe x2 is again 1 let's say 3 5 7 9 11 and 13 and uh, y2 is equals to your any random values like 30 24 65 45 39 55 um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I think there are 7 values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five six seven so let's give one more value as uh, 21 and then down there we can specify here and then here let's give it x1 x2 and uh, y1 y2 we need to specify the color properties to get the segregation and let's say r and b and then enter okay we missed something on the watch okay yeah. x1 is not defined probably i may have not executed it so x1 y1 x2 y2 x1 x2 y1 y2 good okay now it's working fine and as you can see with the help of marker and color we are able to you know get the differentiation between the two different data points another interesting property is uh, is about the size and uh, it's straightforward and say s is equals to just 100 and it will give you the output so like i suggested you can always press shift tab tab because if i correct pretty much everything like alpha which i covered it earlier cmap edge colors this these are like a lot of different properties with which you can explore now let me show you how you can get the data directly from a file so for that i will use import pandas spt and i will create a new object which is orders is equals and i will say pd.read underscore csv and specify the path over here so the path is this and we are getting the first sheet which is order sheet so i'll press ex execute it and it has given me error let's see what it is check off int has no lan ideally it should not give me any error so um okay so now what the problem is that this is an excel file and i'm using cs i'll just use the read underscore excel so now it's fine if i show you the first two observations these are the observation like a real-time data set that uh, you will usually get so we have the sales and discount and let's try to create the sales and discount so for that what i'll do is uh, simply plt dot scatter and here i will pass orders dot sales and orders dot discount and shift enter and here i have in just a few seconds my chart and as it can show you on the y-axis you have the discount since we have discount over here so you have the discount on y-axis and you have sales over here so here the sales is high even after that we have given the last discount but here sales is low but in many cases we are giving the high discount and here are most of the observations where you know uh, a general or a normal discount has been given so always an interest area is equations like uh, data points like this or this or this which are a little bit like an outlier here in this chart one interesting thing that we can probably try is uh, the profit so based on the profit we want to change the size of the circle let's see what happens if i give the s parameters to sorry profit and let's try to execute okay not pretty good because for some of the values the profit is really high so they have been increased like how as you can see well so probably not a good parameter but as you can see it can work if we have uh, relatively good values uh, as compared to the one which i have it over here so that 
that is a parameter that you can specify. Let's probably try it with the maybe unit price. So unit price has a space. So I will have to write unit price like this. And with the unit price also, I think there is a good unit price for some of the value, some of the you know orders. So over here showing the last unit price and this is like a big unit, big, big unit price. So with this, you can change or variate to the variation uh, into your chart and make it more useful. So that's pretty much all I have for you in this video and I'll meet you in the new video, the new topic.